Today on Broadcast, Mother's Day. Would you rather spend it with or without kids? There's no lack of opinions on this one. We want to hear from you. All right, Sophia Vergara's <laughs> embryo, uh, embryo battle. The modern family star's ex wants to have her baby without her consent, and now she is speaking out. A 99-year-old billionaire has his sixth heart transplant. What the what? <laughs> <laughs> and plus the moms we admire and our broad of the week. You have to hear her story. We're taking your calls. 661-298-5487. Good morning. Hi. It's 55 degrees and cloudy in Southern California. Yay. Oh, wait. I feel like Kurt Cobain in the 90s. You look like I'm like that. all flanneled up. Yeah, I am too. I had my Ugg boots on this morning. I was Seriously, super excited. Like 55 here. We're like, what do we do? I, but here's There's the deal. Like a couple days ago. But a couple days ago, I had my cooling mechanism on in my seats. And now I've got the heating mechanism. Look at me having two look things at you. in my fancy car. Your fancy car. Fancy. Um, so let's get right to broad topics. Okay. All right. Sophia Vergara. <laughs> Can you um, say it the way she says it, though? Vergara. Yeah. Um, yeah, I look just like her sometimes. Um, <laughs> so she and her ex had embryos frozen. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I feel like today in this weather. A uh, frozen embryo. No? Too soon? Yeah, yeah it's too soon. Um, but they had it for, uh, and then they broke up. And so he thinks that he wants to have custody of the embryo. Right. Um, but he says it has nothing to do with a baby or her baby, but lives were created. And she says, very simply, um, there, there's a contract that it, neither one of them could do it without uh, consent. So right. I, I definitely want to hear from people um, about this, this topic because it's, it's crazy. What do you, what do you okay, think? Okay, so my, my comment about this is that I, there was a quote, and of course now I can't remember it and I'm, I don't want to ruin it, but something about him saying that he has a right – that he were his parental rights and all this. And I am a, a believer that a man also should be participating in the process mm -hmm. of whether or not a child should be born. Okay. Um, I, I know this is probably unpopular. It's not about not having a woman's right to choose, but I also think that, that we are very quick to dismiss a man's participation in that, yet okay. we hold him 100% accountable once the baby is born, but we don't always invite him into hmm. the conversation. And so I like the fact that he's challenging it. I don't think legally he has much of an argument, yeah. but I like the philosophical and the ethical conversation about why doesn't he have a right to this, to this decision that she's making. And, and again, it's just a little bit yeah. different here with the embryos because they had a contract that they couldn't. Well, it's funny that you say that because I'm like, sh you cannot have a baby with somebody else without their permission. Uh, and then I realize, all the time. well, that's my point. As I'm saying it, I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, that yeah, happens. It happens all the time. And then, and I have always just, ha I've, it frustrates me because then women have babies without the man knowing or without his consent. And then we right. go after him for child support. But there's a contract in this. I mean, yeah. it really should right. be cut and dry. There's a contract. All right. So let's move on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, you know, broad Point topics. Point made. Um, so this one's not necessarily mom related, but it's just too good to, you know, and Tatiana was all up in a, her, her panties were all crazy, you know, in a wad over this one. <laughs> Better um, than being in a bundle. David Rockefeller, the billionaire philanthropist. Tell us about it, Kim. All right. So David Rockefeller, he's on his sixth heart transplant at 99 years 99 old. 99 99 people. He 99. He's gunning for uh, the oldest person. I think the oldest one is 115 now. I, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, the oldest person Yeah, alive. he wants to not be the oldest, oldest person having. No, he wants to be the oldest person alive. So Because um, billions of dollars is not enough. Yeah, and he's already had two... Uh, kidney transplants. And so he says, one of his quotes is, every time I get a new heart, it's like breathing. Oh, it's like the breath of life is swept across my body. I feel re-energized and alive. I've made a lot of money in my life, but I've given most of it away. There's no point of having it if you can't share. That's what something he said. But yeah. the thing he's not sharing, the hearts yeah. with people who are younger <laughs> and healthier. Tatiana, give it to us. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. I saw this all over Facebook, and I was just like, are you kidding me? He is 99 and getting another heart transplant. I don't think that's fair whatsoever. I think there's people out there that have not lived a full life and that are on the waiting list to get a heart. Right. So why are we giving it but to how, someone who's yeah. lived how does a long he bypass, life? He's, but how does he bypass, sorry, pardon the pun, um, the other heart <laughs> people on the list? Like, does he pay them directly? Like, are they not... Does he just show up at the hospital with like a big check? Well, who's to decide who has more of a right to live? Like just because he's 99. I, I mean, he still is entitled to have a life. 
And to live his life? Why, why are we discounting yes, that for him? Yes, but how many people who are f- in their 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, like in 80s, you know? Who- well, maybe he's getting an 85-year-old heart. What? <laughs> well, Radio I just, silence, that's not <laughs> supposed to happen. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> well, that does make a little bit of sense that if he's getting an 85-year-old yeah. heart, you don't want to give that to the 50-year-old guy. Exactly. And we don't know that information. What I find but that's why he's had six of them. Well, <laughs> somebody maybe he should get a different doctor. So what I find interesting is that he's having the, he had the surgery in his home. Did anyone not find yeah, that interesting? I saw yeah. that. Well, mm-hmm. he's a billionaire. I know. Can, that's because have, you got money. And I feel like because you have money, you're allowed to just do whatever you yeah. want and get away with it, whatever you want. So and do you think that there's a breach of some kind of ethical responsibility that the doctors have? You think they're being paid off? Is that what it you're saying? It always comes yeah, down to I the doctor. Yeah, I do, because I think everything, unfortunately, revolves around money. Yeah. And if you could give somebody money, like, hey, you know, like, let me get that heart. I'll give you this amount of money. Like, that person, I feel, is going to do it because... The world, unfortunately, yeah. revolves around money. Okay, so do we know if the money, I mean, is it to the doctor or hospital? We, or we, we, we don't, don't know. know. Right. We can only judge without the information. <laughs> 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 because that's really what makes great radio. So when we come back, Mother's Day, would you rather spend it alone or with the kids? All right, and how do you how do you follow up 13 years as a nun in the convent? Uh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but Mary, and Mary, a father with 11 kids, we're going to hear from one mom's remarkable story. We're taking your calls at 661-298-5487. Taking your calls, 661-298-5487. So Cozy.com surveyed 5,000 moms mm-hmm. asking them what they really want for Mother's Day. What would you say was the number one? Uh, well, without reading, your I know. Script. I was like, I just looked at the answer. Um, <laughs> booze. Oh well. Uh, number one was lazy day doing anything with kids. Number two, brunch as a family. Oh. Number three, relaxing day at the spa. And only four percent, four percent, teeny tiny four percent said they want to be left alone. See, I okay. I never get asked to participate in these surveys. <laughs> I would have said booze. Well, I didn't know Cozy.com existed, so there you go. Um, so Kimberly Clayton Blaine, she is a licensed therapist mental health expert, mom, and known around the world as the go-to mom. Um, Do we have her on the air? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Hi, lady. Thanks for joining us. So um, last week, you know, we're Facebook friends, and I saw that you had written uh, what, what I want for Mother's Day is to be left alone. And I thought, well, she's got to know something because she's also she's not just a mom, but she's a therapist too. <laughs> so, tell us, t- t- tell me a little bit about that, and like, is that are those your feelings? Those are my feelings. Um, yes, I, I, you know, one of the things that I find fascinating about Facebook and uh, how people reach out to connect with others is that's why I use it. I, mm-hmm. I use it to connect with other moms and to friends and colleagues. And you know, I, I think one of the things about Mother's Day which to me, you know, is, is, is actually a kind of crazy, crazy time because to me every day should be Mother's Day. You know, being a mom's hard. And it drives me nuts that all the, the florists are on, you know, high alert, jacking up prices, and I end right. up getting on the phone and having to call out, you know, on my credit card all these expenses to send flowers out, you know, right. to all the moms in our lives when I, I just think it's so highly commercialized. So, you know, I was really inspired to post that and say, you know what, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, and if everyone's saying, oh, isn't Mother's Day really such a great day to honor moms, not all moms have the same needs, you know, and for me in particular, I work hard. I have many, many jobs. I have children, um, you know, that are very busy and and one with special needs, and I'm exhausted, and if you're going to give me the greatest gift of all, a little peace and quiet would be really lovely. (laughs) So, um, you know, I spend Mother's Day with my kids, but I do ask when they say, Mommy, what do you want? Do you want chocolate or do you want to go to spa day? They just want a couple hours to go shopping at Nordstrom. Right. So I'm going to take off and like for a couple hours and shop. <laughs> right. Are right. you are you alone in your feeling? Because I, I have I have a thought about it. But are you are you other people share your thought about wanting to have some time alone? Or are you are you inspiring a tribe to follow your? You know, I I think um, the fact that I'm acknowledging my self care is is probably pretty attractive to most moms, and I think that they that most probably feel the same, and it's, it would be great for me to take some time to myself and do you know some a mom cherishing activity. Um, I mean, clearly, I'm I don't think that um, 
my message in any way is saying that I don't want to be with my family. I want to be with my family, but if my family is going to honor a day that's called Mother's Day and ask Mommy what she would like for that day in my particular needs... It's for, um, you know, a little peace and quiet and to do something fun for myself, which is shop. As I said, I work so hard, I never get shopping days. Right. <laughs> so, so you're not saying, sorry, that, that like, see you suckers and you're gone for the day. I mean, you're talking about taking a couple of hours for yourself. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, to be honest, and I would love to ask other moms this question. Actually, I'd like to ask you two ladies. Um, if you're, do your children like to spend the whole day with you, or are they, like, <laughs> itching to see friends or to get on the Wii or to get on the iPad? What, what do you think? You know, I, well, Jackie and I, we have this debate. We've been friends for I don't even know how long. Um, and I, I actually share your thoughts, Kimberly, that um, I, I too would like some time alone. Um, and it's nothing to do with my son, but maybe it's because I'm a single mom. And so spending the day with my son on Mother's Day, it's just me continuing to do and be. And I think I too would like to have some time. And my kid, he celebrates me. He does great things for me. He gives me gifts and all that stuff. And then as the day progresses, he goes on his merry way and plays basketball or gets on the iPad or whatever, and then it's just it's just a regular day. Because I, like you, feel like every day we should be celebrating each other and celebrating who we are as people and family and not just relegated to one particular day. I don't, I don't think that, my, I mean, my kids certainly, at a certain time, they're like, is this Mother's Day thing still happening? You right. know, I mean, it's noon, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, hasn't it gone on long enough? But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm a, a believer. I mean, I grew up and watching, you know, I'm one of 13 kids, so watching the sacrifices and the, the you know, mom doesn't do a lot for herself. And so I like to use that day to allow them to see outside of themselves and to see how, you know, that somebody else is valuable, which I know we we teach it every day. But that particular day, I kind of like being, you know, oh, mom, do you you want your coffee and you, you know, and letting them kind of. So do you sit on on your couch and like on a throne? Right. On your throne. And you let your kids wait on you hand and foot. Well, it doesn't necessarily happen that way, because I don't know about your kids, Kimberly, but like. And my kids, if they they take a holiday to really act out, you know, it's those special days that are supposed to be the hallmark that they fight more. Right. It's, it's fabulous. But so, Kimberly, let me ask you a question: Are your kids? What was the age to, uh, range between your kids? Five years. Okay, and what's the oldest? Thirteen. Okay, so I I'm wondering if maybe uh, as our kids are younger that. You know the, that maybe maybe as our kids grow, that we will have a different mentality about it. Because I think that as my son gets older, I will want to spend a lot more time with him because he will be gone so much mm. that I won't have. And but right now, we are we are connected. Yeah. Like we are always together. Right. Yeah. But so, you're also yeah. a single mom who doesn't get a break. Yeah. Right. Um, right. You know, exactly. She, like, and you know, I think that um, it's just like Jackie said with all the holidays. It's like their kids. It's the opportunity. Our children are smart. They sense. <laughs> are, when our you know, all of a sudden we're preparing for this day that has expectations. And right. children, the minute they sense an expectation, they, they, it doesn't feel natural to them. Children are always in this in-the-moment state. And then when they sense the parents right. getting ready for this expected amazing day, you know, the kids aren't going to live up to it. And they know that. So as Jackie said, they're going to just kind of take that opportunity to, <laughs> to go off the deep end. So I, I kind of maneuver it so that it, it plays in my favor. So I don't call it Mother's Day. I get in there and I say, it's Mother's Day weekend. Hey, guys. <laughs> so it nice. started this morning. Fantastic. It was nice. awesome. <laughs> well, we're starting right after the show then with mimosas, right? Kim? Yeah. Yeah, Kimberly, thank you so much. We could talk about this all day, but uh, you can find Kimberly at thegotomom.com and also on Twitter at thegotomom. Kimberly, Clayton, Blaine, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Happy Mother's weekend. Day. Thank you, too. Coming up. All right. We're coming up. Moms. We are. We're talking moms who inspire us. Meet some pretty incredible women. Plus, we want to hear from you. 661-298-5487 on Facebook or on Twitter at Broadcast Show. We will be right back. Right, Kyle?